there. This is Nicole from Nicole's Creative Avengers. Thanks for joining me today. Um, this is a podcast about knitting, about spinning, about quilting, and other random things going on in my life. Um, if you're new to watching my podcast, welcome. I appreciate um, you checking this out, and I hope you enjoy it. I hope that I um, make you feel like you're just hanging out with somebody that's a friend, <coughs> or I'm entertaining enough to the point where you just want to laugh at me. I am totally cool with being silly and letting people just laugh at me. Self-deprecating humor my way. Um, but if you're returning, thanks for coming back. I appreciate it. And I am so sorry for the delay on getting in this podcast. Um, for those of you that are new, I try. my goal is to um, podcast every two weeks. I have a full-time job. I'm in ministry. Um, I'm kind of busy a lot. So um, weekly is a little too high of a standard for me and I would constantly disappoint you um, because I wouldn't be able to do that. But I have just been going on with, there's been a lot going on. So I think, it, I believe it's been about four weeks since I podcasted. Um, the last time I podcast, I said, hey, I'm not going to be able to podcast because of the 4th of July weekend. And um, I had said, but I'll, I'll be podcasting the next week. Well, hmm, no, I got sick. <laughs> I got sick. Um, the Friday after the 4th of July, I got it from my lovely parents who I love. Um, they shared that their lovely, like cold virus thing from hell with a cough. Um, and yeah, I'm still recovering. Now, granted, my energy levels are back, but this cough is for, like just, I was going to say grotesque, but it doesn't sound that like that anymore. It's more of a dry cough now and that kind of thing. But anyways, so I got sick the weekend I was supposed to podcast and then we went away for the following weekend. Luckily, my energy levels were better, and I went with my parents up to the lake, and it was just pretty funny. There were, there was my parents, there was me, the three like sickies. We weren't contagious anymore, but we were coughing like all weekend, blowing our nose. It was just awesome, you know, for the people who came along, which was my husband, who never got sick. So I did a good job for sanitizing everything and being self-containing or self-containing myself and then my aunt and uncle came up and it was just funny with three people that are making quite a bit of noise and then three that were healthy and going ah. <laughs> um but i'm still recovering from that and that was three weeks ago i got as of this friday um that'll be three weeks ago today is <coughs> today is tuesday july 26 it's about 7 30 almost so it's been a long day so i'll be like usual, out of it, and confusing myself as well as you when I'm explaining things. Um, anyways, I had to podcast. I don't podcast on weeknights because usually I'm out of it and I'm tired. And But my husband and my friend Justin and my brother-in-law Mike are out in the garage doing their weekly band rehearsal. And I had a podcast because we're going to be on vacation, or at least, I mean, we're not going, it's just a little stay vacation, but there's some um, trips involved with that, um, for the next week or so. So, um, I didn't want to be put in another whole week of delay. Plus I have things to share. Um, so anyways, welcome. Sorry for the long delay, but I just wanted to kind of inform you. I'm not that big of a click, but, um, you know what I'm thinking I probably should do is just post a message in Instagram or Ravelry just to let you know I didn't die still alive and I, I plan on um, podcasting. So let's move on. Um, I'm going to throw up a slide on how you can follow me if you're new to watching my podcast um, on Instagram, on Ravelry. And I have a blog page, just nothing to you know write home about. But um, that just mostly it shows show notes and links to my podcast. I'm just not a writer. Just not. I'd rather... With my hands, I'd rather just create um, with texture and physical things versus words. Um, yeah, so let me throw up that slide real quick. And I have been having computer issues. I think it was a processing memory issue, so I've just kind of done a nice little spring cleaning on my computer so that I don't have to buy a new one. Um, nonetheless, 
I had talked about doing a video for my Israel to Palestine trip. Yeah, it's not going to happen because the software that I have that to do, like I came up with a high standards of how I was going to put this thing together and it's just not working. I wanted to show you a map, show you where you went, show you pictures, talked about it. And I just don't have the capacity for that right now. And I apologize for that. And I, and if you wanted to know kind of what we did and where we went, if you're going to plan on a trip, um, what sites, um, well, I've been three times, so I, I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but, um, I've seen a lot of things and I, I can recommend a lot. Um, and, and even places to stay, that kind of stuff. You can always message me on Ravelry or Instagram and um, let me know what kind of questions you have, whether it's about even planning a trip or just wanting to know what we saw. I don't mind just creating a dialogue with you, um, just you and I. And so I decided that's just kind of how I'm going to do it. And maybe one day I'll show more pictures. But I didn't really remember. Like I said, I didn't take a lot of pictures because I'd been before multiple times. And so I just kind of wanted to see what other people's pictures would look like from my group. And I don't totally feel comfortable taking their photos and showing them, you know? So anyways, moving along, we'll get on to fibery things. But one more thing. <laughs> um, I have to say that one of my favorite podcasts is the Bakery Bears podcast. So if you've never checked it out, check it out. It It is a little, at first I was like, wait a minute, is that a husband and wife? It's a husband and wife duo. And I would say that Dan, the husband, is way more into the whole podcasting thing than maybe Kay is. But Kay is the expert knitter. She is the reason behind the whole purpose of the podcast. But I just love that duo and I love their accent. I can listen to people with a British accent or an English accent, whatever you say, all day long. It's very comforting to a Californian. I mean... I don't know. It's really cool. So I love their podcast so much that I actually, I'm um, sorry. End of the day, contacts are drying out a little bit. I, that's also has to do with age. Um, getting older, but I'm a patron and I'm like, I love supporting their podcast and they do special things. Um, for part their podcasters, they have extra podcasts available just for the patrons. Um, and anyways, so I really enjoy that podcast. I think they're humorous. And one of my favorite things is, okay, well, I love the knitting and I love their interactions. But her, he's a huge history buff and he was a teacher. I think, I believe he was a music teacher, but he was a teacher. And I love history. like, And I'm a historical fiction nut when it comes to books. And so I really enjoy the little adventures they go on. And they sh they take you to castles and all that kind of stuff. And so I love how they kind of break it up. They also have these, um, oh gosh, I'm not going to get it, but like knitting games. Like basically, it's kind of like that old game. It might even still exist, but I don't watch it on TV. Um, where they ask you questions and you have a lifeline and that, that, that kind of stuff. <coughs> yeah. Apparently it's not that great of a game that on TV that I used to watch, but. And that's fun too, you know what I mean? But I think my favorite thing is watching the two of them interact and talk about what what's on the need what's on their needles, you know. You know, they're so funny. And um the field trips we go on. I feel like I'm with them when we go on them. So, anyways, I had to do a shout out for that because I get ecstatic when I see that one of their podcasts is up. I like have to go to that first. And so I just wanted to share that in case you never check them out. So that's the Bakery Bears podcast, and it's on YouTube, and um, you should check it out if you haven't already, but I'm pretty sure if you're into the knitting world, you're totally aware. Okay, finished objects. It's been sock crazy land, because I've been sick, and when you're, when you're sick with what I got, you don't have the patience to, and brain power, let's just say that, to work on a pattern Cause the next thing, cause I tried and I was, I actually picked up, this is works in progress, but I actually picked up the shawl that I'm working on and I'll show a little bit later. Yeah. And I like ripped back like maybe a whole repeat, which is like 10, 11 rows because I just couldn't, 
keep the brain functioning with the interruptions of coughing and sneezing and blowing of noses and that kind of stuff. So anyways, enough about growth stuff. Let's talk about finished objects. Okay, so the first finished object I have that I finished first, slides first, is my mom's socks. I think, I believe that I had showed that I had, um, st my last podcast, I had finished one. And I hadn't even cast on the second, I believe. And I, this is my first pair of nine inch circular needles or needle. It's really only one, it's two needles, but it's one, one circular. Um, and I love the chow goo. Um, I've tried the high ahayas and I just prefer the chow goos. Okay. So first pair, nine inch circulars. These are medium size or medium sock lockers. I love this, how it turned out. My mom She's blonde hair, blue eyes, and pretty pale. She's 100% Irish. And I think there may be some French. I don't know. My mom said French. I don't know what she said. But nonetheless, she's a white girl. And I'm my dad is Hawaiian, and I have his coloring. And, um, yeah, I have his coloring. But my mom has blue eyes, and so I don't know, she just looks great in these colors. I'm holding them really weird, but... Um, this is Sweet Georgia Yarns, and um, it's their t it's her tough love sock. But I got to tell you what I bought these. So I washed, I soaked them, washed them, and blocked them. Well, I mean, you don't really need to block too many socks, especially vanilla socks. This is a vanilla sock, and this is really soft. Like this is my first time using her tough love sock, or at least finishing. <laughs> is really more of the thing, an, an item with this yarn. I really, really like it. And the color is called Cloud Break. And I had mentioned this before. To me, it's the blue sky, and then the clouds are kind of just, they kind of pool. And I like it. This is um, an inch cuff, stockinette stitch. I do um, a slip stitch heel, and then I um, turn the heel with the regular traditional decreasing. And then for toe, I do a traditional decrease. Um, and then a Kitchener stitch the toe. So I, this is cuff down. Love them. So, yay, mommy, you don't, if you're watching this, you don't get these till Christmas, ha! Huh? Um, <laughs> that, yeah, I'm starting now with Christmas gifts because if you, you know, you're a new knitter or, or just new crafter in general, start now because although you might feel like I'm just going to want to, craft away to my little heart content during the fall and and early like winter you're not gonna make it if you just want if you want to make at least a couple or a few gifts so start now if you can and then you just feel so good about that that's done then I had showed my second pair of socks that I was working on I was working on these two socks at the same time these I was knitting on double pointed needles which was my original I said that it was my original preferred method. Oh, and these were on 2.25 size uh, millimeter size nine inch circulars. This, I believe I had one sock done or I was about to finish a sock. I don't remember where I was last time. Progress keepers are a tool that you can put on and say here were, here is where I'm at and then the next time you show off your product your project you can see how much you've knit since the last time you put the marker well I didn't do that so um anyways this is also a cuff down vanilla sock but this is my very first self striping yarn and it's by coloring book yarns I believe I believe I had uh, yesterday I put this out for me to find <clears throat> I'll come on to your silk in just a moment. Ah, found it. Okay. Coloring book yarns. Very basic. Very modern. Um, the colorway is Sweet Tooth. This is her fingering weight. Ooh, there we go. Hand wash light, you know. 80% um, superwash merino, 20% nylon. Perfect soft yarn. Um, and here you go. Okay. For some reason, they just look so silly the way that I'm holding. Okay, how about that? Okay. 
I know I'm a little tired and I just poured myself a little adult beverage and I ate a little bit so if I get a little kooky I'm tired let's face it I'm tired okay I have to do that I really 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 enjoy a lot of the older Mel Brooks movies and Blazing Saddles love Madame Khan and so she I don't know if you've seen that but this is one of my lines I actually don't know if I've ever done this in a podcast but this is one of my lines I love that when I'm tired I just go let's face it I'm tired tired of playing the game you know so anyways that was nerdy and I just did that on public YouTube so socks how about I hold them like this yay this is little short of a one inch cuff which is usually my style because I just get a little tired of doing the double rib you can tell this is why okay see how oh, see, seamless that is but look at look at that little line as much as I try as much as I try to not have a seam where my needles are when I'm switching to one, I still get them, especially when you're working on a, on lighter colored yarns. And so I could not wait to get these stupid things done. I love them. But I was, I was, I'm telling you right now, I have now switched to the preferred method of nine inch circulars. Not only do I knit them, knit way faster, like way faster. Um, they also just seem to be more comfortable for my hands. I've tried knitting Magic Loop, two at a time socks. Not my style. Too much fiddling and clunkiness. And it, and for my kind of like short, stubby, fat Hawaiian hands, um, very strong. They're very strong though. Um, yeah, they just didn't work for me. So I'm really happy that I have found an improvement <coughs> Although I was pretty content with being a double pointed needle girl, needle girl with some knitting socks, I've upgraded. I really feel like it's an upgrade, and I was really not too sure about that, especially when I had bought the Haya Haya Sharp. Um, I keep looking over there because I keep thinking I have a pair to show you, but I actually lent my pair that I decided I'm never using again. Actually, I think I said I gave them to a friend that I'm going to talk about in a second. Um. But then once I tried the chow goos, I was sold. So these ones are super cute. By the way, this yarn is so squishy. Um, I really like this yarn. And I think, first time using self-striping, I think it did an okay job trying to get them to be pretty similar. Oh, 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 oh. They're not exactly because actually I realized that one of the red lines in the in, in the way that they run one of them actually has is longer it's a longer strand of red and then a shorter and so they're a little off on that but you can't tell I don't think so second pair of socks and I'm sorry if I went off on a tangent on that but I'm really excited about switching to my nine inch circulars so much that I bought another pair Actually, I bought two new pairs. So my preferred size, in most cases, because I like to knit socks with fingering weight, is 2.25 millimeter. So I bought a second pair. So in case, because I always like to have two pairs of socks on the needles, at, two pairs going at the same time. So just in case that I am having to work on the same weight yarn and the same gauge is playing out, then I have two 2.5. But I also bought a... Um, one that I can't find right now, but I also bought a gauge smaller, no, larger, larger, um, 2.5 versus 2.25, because sometimes the the fingering, a lot, of, a lot of fingering weight yarns will be a little bit thicker. And I do believe I have the smaller two, not 2.25, but two, also coming now. So then I just, if I have a yarn, I want to knit it socks, and I go, oh, I don't have my right needle size I don't cry and I'm buying those on on Amazon by the way I find that I have prime accounts so the two-day shipping in most cases they're coming on two-day shipping which is excellent 
<coughs> and the price is really reasonable and none of my local yarn shops carry them. So, um, and I, that is something that I will need to communicate to them because I don't think the whole world or the whole knitting world around here realizes the like amazingness of those. Um, third pair of socks. Yes, third. So I cast these guys on. This is actually a stash advancement too. This yarn came in when I was sick. It made me happy. Um, self striping. <laughs> I kind of want to. I really enjoyed self striping, and so I thought I need a couple more skeins of self striping. So this is. Um, let me see if I can pull out the little card. It's Nomadic Yarns. I'll show you a little later in in stash advancement. Sorry about that. Oh, look, is this my good side? Is this my good side? Is this my good side? Just kidding. Um, so this is. Let's just look at your your notes here, Nicole. You actually spent time doing this. Bert, um, nomadic yarns. This is the Brit socks base, and the color is called Modern Romance. And this is also my first. Um, yarn that I purchased that is in this awesome, cool pre-wound. Now, granted, this is what's left. This is the remainder of the yarn from the socks that I knit. And um, I really love this um, gold, like um, goldenrod color. I mean, oh, you know, ochre. It's not really ochre because it has more brown in it, I believe. But um, I really love it. It's really cool, and I really like knitting from these little guys. I mean, I just love it. it sits in this little thing, and it just spins in my bowl. This doesn't even have. This is just from like Target for a dollar ninety nine. Now, granted, when it was in its full size, it was not doing so well in this guy. But as I started knitting, eventually it fit right in there. So this is this. Let's show you the socks. This is again a vanilla socks, nine inch circulars, two point two five needles. And here you go. Yay, sockies! So these are, I've knit nine socks this year. I am part of two knit-alongs for socks. I am part of the box of socks cowl with wool and by yarns. Except for mine is a box of sock hat. It's a sock hat. No. It is a hat box. So it's a round box, but it's still a box. <coughs> cow. I'm also part of, um, let me show you up close. I really love this yarn. I love that, how the purple and the gold um, are not, they're not, sorry, they're not solids. My dog is doing something weird. They're not solids. They're, it's variegated. Or is that tonal? It's tonal. I like it. And um, I'm also part of, the Knitting Broomsticks um, 2016 Sock Cow, which is, you know, you put your goal up at the beginning. I'm going to knit X amount of socks. And I said 12 pairs of socks this year. That's my goal. I thought, I can get one pair of socks done a month. Well, I'm at nine, and it's not even September yet. So I'm ahead of schedule. And now that I'm in <laughs> doing that in circulars, I really might make my goal even further than that. So I'm really excited. So I have gone sock crazy. I'm not stopping knitting socks. I've just wound up a couple skeins of yarn so that I have my next two. I haven't casted them on yet because I literally finished these babies. Yeah, these babies just um, the other day. So, yay me. Um, the two pair that were for me are small, by the way. Not that anybody cares. Okay. I have a quilting finish object. But I will show you that in the quilting sub subject, uh, quilting segment. Hi, Marco. Can you say hi? Oh, you're too far down. It's okay. Wag your tail for us. Thank you. Um, thank you. Very good. Oh, very good. Very good. Okay. <laughs> um, works in progress. Well. I don't know if you would call the show a work in progress because I started it and then ripped it back. So technically there's no progress, but there was work on it. 
so I'm just going to show this again. It's been a while since I've shown it. This is Sweet Georgie Yards, full skins. Nope. I digress. That was wrong. Take that back. Strike that. Reverse that. Sweet Georgia Yarns. Tough Love Sock. See, I said knitting with Tough Love Sock, but I haven't finished it. So, or blockhead. 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 425 yards. So it's a little thinner. And then Succulent Fiber. This was a um, Fiberista Sock Club yarn. 75% BFL, British. Just British BFL. 25% nylon, 475 yards. So this is even a um, little bit thinner. And I, you could feel it when you knit it, but it's not a big deal. This is what's left. This is the last of the brown. And I don't use it the rest of this project, but it is not a solid brown. It is tonal. And then this is the succulent fibers. Blossom color, I believe. Whoops, I forgot to tell you the brown color. Auburn, Blossom, uh, it's very pretty. These two together look like that, but when in this, <coughs> I'm using marbles. Well, I didn't, I used my um, Knitter's Pride, Dreams, Circulars, US 7, I believe, for this project. But then I'm now onto the applied border, and so I'm using the marbles because they're nice and light, and you only really need one. So this pattern is called the Merlot Shawl. This is my French-inspired shawl, Merlot Shawl by Elise Dupont, who's French, I believe. The pattern is five euros on Ravelry, and um, it is a, my first circular shawl. Um, so it's going to be a little hard to show you. Because there's yarn flying around. So that's what I got so far. When it, I mean, the body is done. You'll see it kind of comes around. And I'm on the applied border. And obviously, it's not. Um, there's the face. There's the uh, my brain went away face. It's not blocked. So you can't really tell. But there is this really cute little lace pattern that comes around. And I haven't done that much. It might be, you might think, oh, Nicole, that's quite a bit. Mm, not really. So here's where I'm at. I do have a little air right here, and I'm really upset about it. But maybe I can close that up. I'm not sure. My little stitch marker is the little Eiffel Tower to go with my French theme. But I still have to go. Here's where I end. I'll go. Off to grandmother's house, to grandmother's house, to grandmother's house, to grandmother's house. Here we go. So I still have quite a bit. But here's the deal. It's summer. I'm not wearing a shawl anytime soon, I'll tell you that. It's, it's, I think about 100 degrees out. It was at 630. Okay, it's almost 8. It's probably high 90s still. In fact, this is how anal I am. I'm about to tell you how hot it is right now. We are having a heat, it's a heat stroke. Um, a heat wave in California. I am in Livermore, California, um, which is Northern California, close to the San Francisco Bay. Not too close, but close enough. We're now, we're kind of moving ourselves in the valley. It is 97 degrees out right now. And it's almost eight o'clock at night. It's hot. And so this is not really desirable to knit right now, and I'm not in a hurry. This is something I will want to wear in the fall, so because I just think it's precious and it's pretty. It's pretty. Oh, uno momento, my mom is calling. Okay, um, sorry about that interruption. Um, we're just kind of preparing for our trip up to the houseboat to a lake, and my mom was at the store. And needed my opinion for the menu. Anyways, what was I working on? Um, the lighting is changing a little bit. The sun is coming down. And so I'm just noticing that it's getting a little brighter in here. So just in case you're wondering, it hasn't been hours later. It's only been like five minutes <laughs> since I last video uh, left off on the recording. Okay, so that's one of my works in progress. That was a shawl. Um, the other, and I'm almost about to say this is a finished object, but it's not. 
because I just purchased some buttons and I haven't put them on. But the sweater is blocked and knit. My first sweater for a baby. First sweater ever, but also for a baby. So this is um, just this little cute um, simple, pull it's called a simple pullover. It's by Erica Cambroton, I believe. Um, you can find this on Ravelry. The size I knit was six months, which is the second to smallest. And reason I did what I have no intention on giving this to any specific person. I mean, I, I guess when I give it, I'll be specific about who I give it to, but I didn't have anybody in mind, but I had this yarn that I thought would be really pretty and perfect. Um, this will eventually have, um, you'll see there's some holes possibly if I put it in front of something dark, maybe here. Hello. Three little buttonholes. So when I, I'll just, um, sew those on and they'll be done. So I'm really excited. This was such an easy sweater. Um, but let me go over a little details. Um, I used three skeins. All I had left was this much. Not very much. Um, this is, I got this yarn on sale too, like on Knit Fix or something like that. But I've also seen this yarn in one of my knit, my um, local shops. This is the Filatura di Crosa, made in Italy, Zara Plus Color yarn. It's color three. So it was one of the original colorways, I believe. And it's 100% Lana Verge. Um, it's extra fine merino superwash, which is what you, you want it to be able to be washed instead of for a child. So that is that. Three skeins of that baby with that little bit left over, and I got this little thing done. And um, I just picked up the buttons, and I haven't put the buttons on. One, because I'm too lazy to do them by hand. Where did my buttons go? Oh, where? Oh, where did my buttons go? just kind of cleaned up over here and just you know when you clean up and you clean up to the point where you can't find anything yeah so that's what I just did I think I think not only did I lose my marbles but I lost my buttons weird neighbor activity going on, on the outside just kidding um yeah so guess what you don't get to see the buttons until they're on a sweater the next time I do a podcast so this cute little guy, I really enjoyed it. I will knit more of these. I want to knit a little girl one. I probably knit a, a new, like the smallest size. And um, the thing is, is I don't have a lot. I didn't even tell you what kind of weight this was. I believe it's an Aran weight. Doesn't even say on here. 77 yarn for 50 grams. I believe it's an Aran weight. And, um, yeah, super soft and squishy. I'm so happy with this, how this turned out. And it was just, this is a top down knit all in one, no, no piecing or no seaming. And, um, I love that you just pick up stitches for the arms. It's just, Actually, do we even pick up stitches? I don't even remember. That's how easy it was that I didn't need to remember. It wasn't complicated. I didn't get traumatized. So, to me, that's a finished object, but technically, no. Because I still need to put the buttons on. Um, that's it. So, those are the two projects that I consider work in progress when it comes to knitting. Um, the next thing is... What's coming up on my needles? Actually, you know what? Let's roll that sucker down a bit in the agenda. Let me go to um, spinning. So guess what? None. Um, there were like maybe 25 times when I was sick for the like week or almost two weeks that I thought, I really should spin. I want to spin. I just never did it. I think just sitting up with good posture and focusing 
was just too much. So I keep looking at my spinning wheel and I keep looking at my stash um, or the project that I'm currently working on that's on my bobbin right now. And I, so I'm hoping to get some of that in when I get back and when I'm kind of doing some of the stay vacation time. So maybe I'll do a speed in my shirt. Um, so no spinning. Sorry. And you know, the truth is, is that I'm not a very good spinner. I'm really still a newbie. And I want to get better at that. I want to, I want to knit my, my own spun yarn. So that is a goal of mine. <coughs> but quilting. So I have finished and I haven't given it to the lucky, lucky baby in the new family, but she's born. I have finished um, a quilt for my friend Colby's little girl. And I had showed you um, this before, after I had pieced it, so you, the top was done. And I hadn't basted it and quilted it. Well, I quilted it. And I quilted it. And um, as I gotten better, I just literally finished this. I believe I finished this yesterday. I put the binding on yesterday. But so this is the quilt. Let me scoot over so you can see it. You get close. Uh oh, Jack, my cat wants to come out. So that's the block. And you can kind of see. Let me see if I can get the lighting is starting to change. What I kind of did for the medallion in the center, it's all it's all um, freeform. Like I didn't sketch anything out. Um, I can't really see. Let me turn it around. This is cute. So this this whole fabric line is a collection. Aside from this gray linen border that I put in. Okay, I put that separately. Um, yeah, I purchased just kind of like a half yard set of this. So I still have a lot more yardage, um, specifically all these half yards. Cause I didn't use a lot of the blue colors cause this was for a girl. Well, I didn't even know that when I started it, but the colors of her nursery are red and teal, I believe. So I try to accent that this is an orangey red, but I think it'll go. And there's a lot of teal. And then I bought this backing yard, yardage. It was on sale, which is a bonus. And so maybe if I get closer, you could just see what I did. I just kind of did loopy loops here in the border and then around the blocks. This is, that was my phone. That was awesome. I'm sorry if that scared you guys. I just did, just did like swirls. So easy done. Love it. It's finished. It is this big. That is going to go to her when I get back. <coughs> and now the question is, what am I working on next is quilting? Well, the next baby that was due was my friend Naomi's little boy, but she has changed gears on me. She sent me a photo a couple weeks ago. Can you knit this? And what it was, was a newborn prop basically for a newborn photo of a little mermaid tail, but it was crocheted and I don't crochet and I've never crocheted other than like a crocheted line just to, to do, a, um, you know, for knitting, use it. I can't even remember what it's called. Um, so then I said, but you know, what? I bet you a million bucks. I can go on Ravelry and I can find a knitted version. And so I did. And so for her, I told her, cause she's like, can you knit this? And like, she's due in like eight weeks, so that's seven weeks now. Um, and that, I don't think this knitting project will take that long, but I'm busy and I, I don't like putting myself in a short restraint and then disappointing, especially since this is for newborn photos, which means you have to do it the first week. According to her, it should be within the first week of her being born. If she comes early, you know what I mean? I don't want to be like that. So I told her, like, if she's like, can I pay you to make it and pay for the yarn? And I said, no. Um, if I make you this, I probably won't be able to make a quilt on top of that. And she's like, can you make this instead? This would be so cool. 
it would be in her pictures forever. And I said, yes. So I'm, she's asked me to knit that as a gift instead of giving her a quilt, which is fine. And, um, I'll go ahead and show you the yarn. I mean, this is stash advancement, but this isn't going this is specifically for the yarn. Um, this is the same brand and weight yarn that the, the pattern, um, which is called, Oh, I'm so sorry. This is what happens every time. The, the Mermaid Cocoon Newborn Photo Prop. That is the name. Um, by Angie Harley. It's a $4 pattern. I'm using the Karen or Carry On, whatever it's called, Simply Soft Party um, base in the colorway teal. This is a this is a, um, a light worsted, I believe. And um, she wanted a teal tail. And then when I showed her, I went to Joann's because, okay, let's just be real. This is a newborn prop. At first, I was going to go to my local yarn shop and find yarn. And then I thought, why am I going to spend a fortune on, on yarn on an item that will only be worn once, twice, not, not very many times, and then be put away as something to show later, right? It may be used again, but it's not worn to just wear around. It's a prop, right? The baby um, probably won't wear it a whole lot. So I didn't want to go crazy with yarn so that it lasts forever with wear and tear. So I just went with the cheaper yarn, went to Joann's, and I put all the blues and teals and the greens together, and I told her to kind of pick one, and then she liked the sparkle one. So this is, it's not, it's because of the lighting. I'm so sorry. It is way more green. Then it's coming out, but I think that it'll look pretty. And mermaids tails are very iridescent, right? All the mermaids I've ever met, their tails are very iridescent and beautiful and they sparkle in the water. So I only need two skeins and then I had a coupon. So this really cost me hardly anything. So I plan on starting this. This is a little complicated of a pattern and I don't mean like, I don't think it's gonna be super hard for me, but you have to pay attention very very much pay attention to where you're at so this isn't going to go with me when I go away because I'm going to be around people and <clears throat> I'll be picking things up and putting them down but that's an upcoming project and some stash advancement um the other upcoming projects oh no we were on quilts the other quilt that I need to figure out like what I'm going to do regarding yardage and fabric fabric yardage is for my friend Kim Rogers, who is adopting um, a little boy who's due in mid to late September. And um, so she had told me kind of some ideas like teals. I think it was the teal is in people and something other color. But the photo she sent me was really cute, but it's not giving me the exact idea of the coloring. So I want to make sure that I stay in the same similar family so they don't clash. So I'm just waiting for an updated photo of the color scheme. And then I'm going to start picking fabrics. And so I'm making a quilt for a little boy. That's the next agenda for quilting. Moving on. And stash advancement. And, and I'll even get into upcoming projects on the needles. And it's getting a little dark in here. Let me see if I add some lighting if that, if that helps. Okay. So maybe a little bit more lighting. It's the sun is going down. So there was no light coming pretty much in the windows. So I shut the blinds so that everybody in the neighborhood can't see what I'm doing. And turn on an overhead light and a little day lamp. So hopefully that will help. So because I I want you to see my new yarn. Um and fiber. So first things first, what the stash advancement fast <laughs> oh my gosh. Stash Advancement, Sweet Georgia Yarns. Um, this is my, I'm part of their fiber club and I'm really liking it. Just only if I can get through some of the fiber that I have. I'm actually knitting on one of <coughs> the braids from this club. Knitting, sorry, spinning. This is the July and I'm sorry for the noise. Um, it is July now, so if you're part of this club and you still haven't received your fiber. I mean, I got this literally the first week of July. Look away. Superwash Merino and Nylon 85, 15, 100 grams, 
July color Odyssey. Um, that looks pretty true to color here. So maybe a little green, a little more green in it than you're seeing here. Because this is what happens when your lighting goes. Yeah, it's picking up more blue, but there's a little bit more green to that. And um, good masculine colorway. I think you can make some really great socks or um, um, a hat with this. So looking forward to that. Really happy with that colorway. Um, a lot different than the ones that have come in the past. Um, the other stash advancements. Um, ooh, I just looked at my notes and I actually got some yarn yesterday. It's not even on my notes, but it's okay. It's here. I can pull it up. Um, spun right round July sock club yarn. So if you didn't get your spun right round July sock club yarn, this is the Moxie sock. I'm part of the surprise me club. So they pick the base and, but the colorway is usually similar. Everybody gets the same colorway. This color is called prickly pear. This is hundred percent super wash merino. Um, I believe this is a sink on singles. I think her Moxie sock is singles, 400 yards. I really love this color. Oh, and it's coming, it's kind of getting washed out. It's getting washed out. Ah! Maybe back here. It is just this really cool, let me see. Okay, see how dark that center is? That's really the color. See this? That is really more of the color of the whole thing. But it's so pretty. It's it's tonal. And I think that it's just really pretty. And it's singles. And I have not knit singles. I'm thinking I might knit a shawl. Use this probably in another skein. Let's see how it turns out. But I really like that. Then... To go along with that self-striping yarn that I had, um, this one here, the Modern Romance one, I bought two skeins from her, or balls, is that they're in the ball shape. Um, this one is on her Spark socks, so this has Stellina in it. 75% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, and 5% Stellina, Silver Stellina, it looks like. 438 yards, so this is a little bit of a smaller uh, or thinner yarn than the um, Brit sock, which was this one. These, this, is, this is this one. The colorway is Cyrus, and it has a little Harry Potter um, charm, which I left on there because I haven't used it yet. Um, oh, not Cyrus. I'm sorry, Sirius. Like Sirius Black? What am I talking about, huh? Okay, so you can see that it's got navy blues, um, a good eggplant purple, this um, really good silvery gray, this most and black and obviously black black is coming in here and so I really like this and I don't know if you can you can kind of see some of the sparkle serious black I saw these movies a long Harry Potter movies a long time ago because my kids are like in their mid 20 like early to mid 20s and when these movies came out, we saw them either in the theater or we rented them. <coughs> Probably Blockbuster at the time. They didn't have Netflix, at least with the early, early ones. And so it's been a while, but I, when I saw this, it says Sirius, and I'm like, just the spelling, and I thought, hey. And then I saw the charm, and I thought, Harry Potter. So recently, the some audiobooks that I've downloaded, I'm going through the whole Harry Potter books on um, Audible. And so I finished the first one and now I'm on, I just started the second one. And um, I never read the Harry Potter books. I read all the Lord of the Rings. I'm a huge fantasy fan. Um, I'm a huge J.R. Tolkien fan. Um, but I'm enjoying them. They're, you know, the audio books that I'm listening to, they're very theatrical and um, I just kind of forgot how silly um, some of the humor is and the stories and the characters. So looking forward to knitting these guys. Great yarn. And I love this. They spend the time to, to roll, to, um, wind these balls the way they do. It's, it's, it's kind of special. I have those. 
and it's really convenient because they store super well and so if I ever want to knit this into something else or use it for minis very convenient unlike I forgot to show you this is what was left over for my mom socks which is quite a bit like I could probably do some shorty socks with this and this is what's left over for the other um, socks quite a bit but probably not as much as the one for my mom's okay then the two skeins that came in the mail yesterday I had just ordered these last week they came super fast from New York New York New York okay um spun right round she I wish I knew her name. Can't remember her name. Posted on Instagram that she was doing a shop update, and there was just this one skein, which is not the one I'm going to show you, but the one that I have wound up and ready to cast on. Um, and I just had to have it. I just thought, I don't have anything like that. I need to knit some socks on that. But while I did that order, I got a got a skein of that. I also saw this one, and I just thought this was really clean and cool, and they looked like they'd be great socks or knit into a shawl. So this is her um, superwash sock, 80-20, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 400 yards. The color is called Space Boy. And so this is it. It's got this denim, really cool denim blues, light and dark on a very off-white creamy color with these specks of burnt orange and yellow kind of going through it. Um, and I can see why she says Space Boy. I mean, I can see this being like shooting star in the dark sky. I don't know. Just coming up with my, my own just decision. But this is the um, label. Spun right round. Did I say spun right round? Oh, that's it. That's it. I was just thinking of that song. You spin me right round. Yeah, sorry. That's probably not the best song to sing right now. So that was the first game. The other, other skein, I actually have wound up because I'm about to cast this sucker on. This color was called It's the Same Base uh, Blender or Blended. I can't tell because I don't want to be at. It's Blender. Super bright. I don't have anything like this. And it's not even coming up neon like it is. This is way more vivid than you're seeing, but you can get a gist. So what I'm going to knit with these are my first pair of roll silly roll Rose City Rollers. Just so fun. It's got it's literally fluorescent. Like the yellows are fluorescent, the orange are fluorescent. I mean, this reminds me of the 80s. Um, this reminds me of my trip to San Diego as a kid where I had like all these awesome fluorescent shorts and shirts and went to Disneyland. It just brings back memories. So, so looking forward to that. Rose, Rose City Rollers. And I think I'm going to, I'm going to knit the medium size for that pattern and Rose City Rollers can be found. It's a free pattern and it's found on Ravelry. And they're basically shorty socks with the just kind of, there's no cuff. It just kind of rolls over. And um, I, I like shorty socks and I don't know why I never started this before, but I'm going to knit the medium size, but I have really small, like I have wide medium because I have a wide foot, like an instep, but lengthwise it's going to be short because I have short, I wear, I wear like a five and a five and a half length, although I can normally fit in normal shoes that so you don't have to go up to six but um because of the width but so i'm hoping i have enough to do like two pairs and i can gift a pair or then i just have two pairs of them i don't know or um like ooh no i need a pair of rose city rollers and then i can do like a knit a hat or something where i can have this be a secondary um pair that with another another yarn that's what i'll do possibly and then that's it for stash advancement. This is the second project that I plan on, which is my second sock. So these are going to be socks. This is going to be just a standard vanilla sock for me, but it's the same brand. And I've had this in my stash for a little while now. So this is the same 
um, spun right round. It's their her superwash sock 8020. And this colorway is called Banshee, I believe. Yeah. And this is kind of me. <laughs> Sucks. It's so it looks white, but it's actually a pastel pink. And then purples and pinks and blacks and grays. Just try seeing. Yeah, I mean, can't really tell. So when I start getting these guys on or I finish them, you'll see. But I really like this. This is just going to be a great sock. So aside from the mermaid tail and these two socks, those are the two that we're gonna. I'm going to start casting on soon. <coughs> so on my buttons to my little sweater. And then I'll have four projects, working projects with that shawl that I'll probably put on hold for a little while. But that's what I'm doing. I'm so sorry if this episode is really long. I'm really tired and long-winded. I'm looking at my notes. I covered it all. I covered everything I needed. Um, yeah. I hope that I'm so. I hope that you enjoyed watching. I hope you had a beverage of your choice. I hope you got to laugh at me multiple times and that um, you got excited about some of the yarns I got and maybe I ins enabled you to purchase something. Um, I just purchased this the yarn from Spun Right Around, so I bet you a million bucks that they have some of her newest updates still probably around because she does knit up quite a bit. Maybe not, <laughs> but keep your eye out because she just have great, she has great colors. Um, and I'm going to say this, um, I over, um, watched some podcasts from Kay from the Bakery Bears and she had mentioned she was going to do, she did a review on Hedgehog Fibers. She was using their tradition, like their standard sock yarn. Um, and she was not very impressed with the yarn. In fact, she probably won't buy another skein of Hedgehog Fibers or at least that base that she was using, which is the same base that in their sock club that I was part of. And so I have, um, I knit one socks, one pair of socks with hedgehog fibers. And then I have probably two or three more skeins left. Sorry for the winking, that was dry eyes. Um, and you know, I, I kind of agreed with her. It was my least favorite yarn to knit with. It split. It didn't flow. It didn't feel like it flew really well. Like I felt like it, sh like it. It split a lot, and I'm not, I don't normally split yarn too much, and I just felt like you had to try to avoid splitting. And if you didn't catch it, because if I'm trying to knit and learn not to look, you know what I mean? I'm trying to knit without looking. And if you missed it, then it was really obvious. It just was a pain in the butt. So um, I really love their colorways. Like the dyeing is amazing. Um, just not a big fan of the base. And... Um, so, I don't know why I randomly said that, just because I think I saw a skein of yarn that was that. So, hmm. You know, I'm thinking about doing another giveaway when we reach 100 subscribers on YouTube. And I think it might be a Hedgehog Fibers skein of yarn. Because the truth is, is it's beautiful yarn. And I the socks are really comfortable. It's just not my style of knitting. And I don't know if that was a really bad, like, job. Like I just said, I don't like the yarn that great, that much. Or it's not my favorite yarn, but hey, I'm gonna give you give you one away if you're oh that's horrible, huh? Well, that's what you get. That's what you get when I put that's what I get for podcasting at night. Um, but I know that Hedgehog Fibers is super popular, so I think if I was gonna say I'm gonna give a skate of Hedgehog Fibers away to give away, people would say, I wanna try it. Because Lots of people love it. Like, it's one of the most popular yarns out there. Just, I could be a weird person, which we already know I am. So, just, just solidifies that fact. Um, but anyways, so, it's today is Tuesday, but it, I probably won't load this sucker up until Wednesday morning because I won't be up all at night trying to get this loaded up. Um, but I'm gone a little bit here and there. So I'm thinking probably for sure in two weeks I will podcast again and um, hopefully I'll have some progress done on my socks and um, maybe who knows. Um, that's all I have to say. 
tired. Let's go. I'm tired. And I'll talk to you guys later, okay? Take care. Hope to see you next time.